Denny, how you doing, ma'am? Tom Jones! <laughs> <laughs> right, that raises a good question about this film that I have written down. The yeah. rat nan is obsessed with Tom Jones, and that's clearly a joke about, like, oh, your nan in real life is like, yeah, oh, those true. rock stars from the past, I love them, they're great. Okay, right. Is she obsessed with the human Tom Jones or some sort of rat Tom Jones? That is a very good question. That's what I'd like um, to know. See, I don't know. Because, <laughs> just, yeah, but there's not, it's not as if, like, the rats have like, looked at London, <laughs> taken a copy of like, every single person that lives there, and then have, like, <laughs> like assumed, um, those, assumed those identities. Like a very surreal version of that Jordan Peele film. Was it called Us? Whereas, yeah, like, us, everybody's yeah. wearing the orange jumpsuits. Yeah. That's that's right. That's and pushed like, away too. Every rat is wearing an orange jumpsuit <laughs> with a golden pair of scissors. When someone dies in London, they go, oh, I guess I have to die too. <laughs> <laughs> everybody gather around for Neil's summary execution. <laughs> we have to kill him now. N- n- surface Neil died, so under London Neil must perish. <laughs> I'm gonna guess it's I'm gonna guess it's the above one because they watch the World Cup. There's not a rat World Cup. That's true, yeah. Although I do like yeah. that they watch the World Cup on like an iPad. Do you know what I mean? They just <laughs> yeah. teletaped an iPad to a building and they're like, okay. How did well... that even How did that even get down there without mm. like, just short circuiting? I don't know. Maybe it had a waterproof case on it. How how are they charging it? Where are they getting the electricity from? Did Fuck. they must have flushed an iPad intact within in within shrink wrap. So they've got like the charger, the iPad, didn't get water damage, and they plugged it into. Um, maybe they sent a reconnaissance. Or whatever. Maybe they sent a reconnaissance group up to steal an iPad. <laughs> maybe they did. Yeah, they sent them up the well-known toilet in the Apple Store, and they stole an iPad. <laughs> yep, they they tricked an Apple genius and managed to get one down the. T- <laughs> yeah, it's like um, it's like that bit in the World's End. You have to go up to the Genius Bar and you go. I've got the toilet. <laughs> and then they just <laughs> let you through to a back room. Yeah. Yeah. Don't worry. <laughs> I've got a special <laughs> character. <laughs> have you got any drugs? <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. Right. Um, have we got a bit of bullshit for today, Dan? Do you want to do, you want to do a cheeky spin of the wheel? I do, yes. Uh, okay. Advertising. Is my, is my bit of, of podcast sort of bullshit today. Right, I listen to a lot of podcasts in the day-to-day, and I think that it's obvi- obviously, as both a human being who is a person that listens to podcasts, and also um, somebody that runs a podcast, it makes sense to run ads on podcasts. Lots of people listen, people are going to eat, it makes sense to run ads on podcasts. There's no two ways about it. Mm-hmm. But what it doesn't make sense to do is to copy and paste the audio from your TV ad and run that as a podcast ad. That's what it doesn't make sense to do. Because, I mean, well, in some cases it does. If I've got Hugh Dennis in the breaks of some TV show saying, you can get the new Chromebook such and such for 459 at Curry's PC World. So, okay, great. Thanks, Hugh Dennis. I'll go and do that. Yeah. But it doesn't make sense for, there is one company that does this relentlessly, and it drives me insane, Now TV. Oh, careful. Libel. Yeah. <laughs> oh no, Dan! I've just had an email. That's the three billion pound deal with Now TV. That's off the table now. Ah oh, shit. Um, shit. But yeah, right. Now TV does this thing where on their actual TV ads, that it's almost like a clip show. That they'll have a narrator saying, "You can get uh, a thousand new movies a month for four ninety nine or whatever it is." And then yeah. they'll have somebody in a film going, oh my god, or wow, or, or something like that. And that's how that's the, 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 the advert. And it works well on a TV because you can be like, oh yeah, Hillary Clinton goes wow. Which, by the way, is she does. Do, that's, that's the advert. Is, uh, they say, oh, a thousand new movies a month for eight quid. And Hillary Clinton Wait. goes, wow, what? For some reason. <laughs> <laughs> it's like an interview Wait. with Hillary Clinton. And she's sat there in a chair going, wow. It's bizarre. <laughs> So they're, they're relying on Hillary Clinton to get people to buy. Apparently <laughs> they are, yes. Why not go for someone like, like The Rock? Or like, like someone with some star power rather than Hillary Clinton? Wow! Lord knows. But anyway... They say that's... Pokemon Go. I say Pokemon Let's Go to the Polls. <laughs> she Good actually, one, Hillary. Thanks. She actually fucking said that. She did, that. yeah. But that's my point, is that that clip show thing doesn't work in an audio format 
it, it's yeah. it, because you're listening to it and it's like, oh, Hugh Dennis is telling me about the latest deals on laptops yeah. at Curry's. <laughs> oh, great. And then I'll finish that podcast. I'll go on to the next one. And then your podcast player or the podcast host or whatever slots in an advert and you're listening to this thing where it's uh, a thousand nine movies a month for 99 quid. And then you hear, or, and then you hear, uh, wow. from Game of Thrones go, that's amazing or something. And it's like, oh, well, that what, was what, what? <laughs> whoa, whoa. <laughs> Daenerys from Game of Thrones. That's amazing. Yeah, do you remember that episode where she had her voice box switched out for somebody else's? Do you remember that episode? <laughs> um, but yeah, that's my point. The clip show is a shit. It's a shit way to advertise in a podcast format. There are good ways to advertise in a podcast format. For example, I can't believe I'm about to say this, but the British ad British Army runs ads on podcasts, which I don't quite understand why they do that, but they do. And um, right. The at the adverts that they have, it's like sort of street noise, and they, then it'll sort of fade out, and somebody will come in and say, "Did you hear the sound of confidence being made in the army?" And then you'd be like, oh, "Cut out the kids playing football. Cut out the sound of that man selling in somebody else a something, some a burger or whatever." And uh-huh. then, and then it'll be like a soldier going, and it's like that's the sound of confidence being made in the army. Enlist, and then. And then I say, no, and then I skip on to the next podcast. But my point is, that's an interesting way to advertise a product. I mean, the product is Get In The Army, which is a strange product. But that, <laughs> but that's my point, is it's an interesting way to advertise that. They haven't yeah. got Hillary Clinton to go, wow, the army, or anything. It's just, do you know what I mean? It's just, there are interesting ways <laughs> to do things with interesting different formats. And for some reason, advertisers seem to be desperately clinging on to these TV ads they've been running but. Fucking decades. Do you know how much money, like, Amazon have got? Ha- imagine how many podcast ads you can run. A lot. Oh, exactly. With with the infinite amount of money that Amazon has. I would be ads. interested in an interesting advert where they, like, they play into my headphones something about Alexa, and it's like, she asks me a question, and I'm like, oh, I don't know. Do you know what I mean? There is an interesting way to advertise things. Why, yeah. why are you doing it in the shit weird way that doesn't work? No, I agree. I agree with you. Um. <sighs> Plus, <laughs> advertising part two. Oh God, this is—I mean, this is slightly less of a of a of a of a complaint, more of a request. Um, obviously, the internet has trawled all of the data that is available in my everything in my life. Google knows yeah. essentially everything about me. They know my fingerprint, my my debit card number, then my face. Because well, my my old phone, it had like a face <laughs> unlock function. Yeah. <laughs> my phone was linked to Google. So Google probably know everything there is to know about me. And yet still, I get targeted adverts for like gym products. I have, yeah. Google, you, you are literally tracking my location 24-7. I have never been to a gym. No. I would like to be able to go into the advert settings and say, yeah, fine, harvest your data, I don't give a shit, but target relevant products to me. Like, I might want to buy a phone, or some stationery, or some coffee, or what... I would like those adverts, please. Target the gym adverts to somebody that gives a shit. That's yeah, exactly. what I would. That's what I think about advertising. I think yeah. it's a weird, outdated format that for some reason we're clinging to when it would just be so much easier to not do that. So that's that's what I think about advertising. <laughs> I mean, I, I I agree with you. I think yeah, but it's 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 probably they're probably like working off of like an algorithm. So so rather than just using common sense, they'll be like, well, the algorithm says that this will work, so we need to just stick with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, oh, but I don't know. I, d- I don't know how advertising works that. really. I'm just guessing. Uh, I remember seeing this um, this interview with like I think it was like a CEO of YouTube or somebody high up in the algorithm um, making business <laughs> or whatever it was. But he was like yeah. he was working for YouTube at the time, and he they said to him, "So if you had to improve the YouTube algorithm, how would you do it?" And he said that the thing that he doesn't like about it is that he doesn't want to watch like an instructional video on how to fix a toilet seat or whatever because he knows that then he'll get recommended every video on YouTube about how to fix a broken toilet seat. Yeah. Because that's the nature of the YouTube algorithm. You watch one video and it's like, here, every video in the world. <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, I bought, I don't know, a, a to- like I said, uh, going back to the toilet seat thing. Oh yeah, my toilet seat, uh, fucking 
burst into flames. So I needed to buy one off Amazon. And now Amazon are sending me an email every day with ten different sort of toilet seats in it. Do you want what? another toilet? <laughs> <laughs> That's actually really creepy, isn't it? If you imagine Jeff Bezos just like, do you want another toilet? <laughs> Is your toilet That's working it. all right? Is that toilet seat all right? <laughs> I see you bought a toilet. Do you want another one? <laughs> We've had one toilet, yes, but what about a second toilet? Why not go for three? Hat trick. <laughs> I just bought a house in New York with 300 bathrooms. Maybe you need 300 toilet seats. <laughs> no, Jeff Bezos, I don't think I do. <laughs> oh, for fuck's sake. No, I, li- I, I, li- I like that idea that he's just creepily <laughs> stalking people's profiles saying, this guy needs a toilet. <laughs> Recommend him one, Susan. Yes, sir. Susan's afraid. <laughs> Su- Susan doesn't look at Susan's Jeff. Susan's afraid in the because eye. Jeff Bezos is pointing a gun at her head. I would. That seems to be the way he conducts himself. For legal reasons, we have to say that Jeff Bezos is not pointing a gun at yeah. his employees' heads. Okay. He's just doing it with wages instead. <laughs> <laughs> Susan, oh. do you want to be able to pay for your prescription and your rent this month? Yes, I do, Mr. Jess, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Jeff Bezos. Then you'll recommend this man a toilet wow. seat. Okay. This is getting very. This is getting very dark. <laughs> <laughs> Should we light it up a bit there? What's What's the film we're talking about today? It's a kids' film. This one. Yeah, so it's it is more more light-hearted than Jeff Bezos being a weirdo. <laughs> uh, it's flushed away, and it's it's the first of a uh, the the Arden trilogy that we're gonna do, isn't it, Lewis? It is indeed. It is indeed. I fucking love Arden. <laughs> They're great. I said I, I, Arden. I cannot Yes, you did. Um, I cannot it's, think of the, the Ar- an Ardman film that I have not enjoyed. It's first of the Ardman trilogy, isn't it, Lewis? And that's it, what we're... Yes. Yeah. See, scrub it out. Yeah, I'll never... scrub it out and copy, the, copy that bit of audio across. Yeah, perfect. Well, it's me that's editing, so oh, I don't know what yeah. you're... You will. <laughs> I'll forget. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was written by uh, Dick Clement and Chris Lloyd and a few others, but... You know, space on the page. And uh, it was directed... <laughs> and it was directed by uh, David Bowers and Sam Fell. And it is starring Hugh Jackman, Kate Winslet, Ian McKellen, Bill Nye, and Andy Serkis. Yep, there are so many people in this film. It's such it's a star-studded so... cast. Yeah! Holy shit! But anyway, do you have an opening statement? I do. Such a fun film, brilliant casting characters, great script, love it. It's, it's one of my favourites. Whenever I'm sad, I think I'll put on put on Flushed Away. That'll cheer me up. Yeah. Um, it's refreshing to watch a film that doesn't have any politics or bullshit in it. Just a funny Disney crossover. Yes. Um, have you got right? Have you got any CRQs, CRSs, oh, CRFs? I thought you were gonna... I thought you would have got that joke, Lewis, but never mind. A Disney crossover? Yeah. I, don't, I mean, I don't get it. Have you seen my dad? Oh! Yeah. <laughs> Have you seen me dad? <laughs> do you get... Uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> I do have some CRQs. Um, the Wolverine outfit at the beginning yes. uh, reminded me of what Simon, good friend of the show, said <laughs> to you when you wore a Wolverine t-shirt. I... Do not remember this. Please enlighten me. Okay, okay I'll tell the story. So, uh, Lewis had just come out of um, uh, ADR, which stands for what, Lewis? I've, I don't fucking know. Something digital recording. Yeah. It, it, it's where, so, so, yeah, you, you, they record you speaking as you're acting, obviously. And then if, if the take isn't very good or, or something's gone wrong with the recording or whatever, they make you say it again in like a little recording booth. Yeah. And Lewis happened uh, to be wearing a Wolverine t-shirt, mm-hmm. who is a, a, a character in Marvel Comics. And uh, Simon was walking past. He spotted the t-shirt, stopped dead in his tracks, walked up to Lewis and said, Do you know what you and Wolverine have in common? And Lewis went, No, what? Nothing. <laughs> and then <laughs> walked up. So, yeah. Lovely story. Lovely story there. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I, I don't even know where that Wolverine t-shirt is now. I might have burned it out of shame. Burned it. And Immediately of, after of... Simon said that, I thought, oh, that is such a shameful thing to point out. <laughs> I'm so sad now. And I immediately burned it. Yep, immediately. Immediately. Um, I would like to uh, address 
three things that don't make sense in the start of this film. I mean, you know, the film is about talking rats. He's supposed to take with a pinch of salt. But on yeah. this show, we have not heard of salt. So therefore, <laughs> I would like to point out thing one, the numbers that he punches into the microwave when he's popping the popcorn. He types in 56532 on the microwave, which I'm presuming <laughs> is like a sequence of is minutes. Numbers. <laughs> yeah, so it's 565 minutes and 32 seconds, which is a long time. He likes his popcorn well done. <laughs> he likes he likes his popcorn flavoured like a house fire. That's what he likes his popcorn like. <laughs> yeah. What um, right, bearing in mind that the family went away, they were they're on holiday. Why did they leave all that food out on the dining table? A cake, uh, some yeah. sausages. Loads of stuff just out on the table that Roddy is like stalking between. I don't I don't know. That's a good question. Um <laughs> The, there's some inconsistencies with this film. I'll, I'll admit it. There's some <laughs> some wacky moments. <laughs> yes, there is also one that I I Chloe and I watched this bit of the film because we watched it last night or the night before. We watched it about ten times in a row. This this one particular bit. Uh-huh. There's the bit where the DVD is standing upright in the DVD player. Yeah. Roddy is wearing a tuxedo and he's got like a little uh, like a Nerf gun or something. He shoots the disc and the disc falls over and slides into the DVD player it's yep. like, oh yeah it's like the opening to james bond <laughs> great but like uh-huh. the thing that the thing is right the disc was stood up and and we were stood sort of behind it as it were roddy fired the bullet towards us so that so it hit the front of the disc the disc then fell towards roddy yeah and then that oh. means that the the dart because as the, as the dvd tray slides in the dart pops off onto the floor. So that would mean the dart would be pointing at the floor, but instead it's at the top. So the dart has to teleport around. <laughs> and that alone is why we're giving this film a Z. <laughs> also, it was sort of glossed over as a bit of a gentle joke about poo in the film. But um, the rat played by Shane Ritchie just comes to a house and shits on the floor. That's that's what happens there. <laughs> he just yeah. walks in and he's like, oh, I'm going to steal your food, take off my clothes and shit on the floor. That's what <laughs> that rat does within about 30 seconds of being introduced. So that's something. I mean, you get to know his character really quickly. Um, <laughs> you do. This is true. I've, I've got a wee th- th- gripe thing. Mm-hmm. Um, when the chase sequence is happening, uh, the toaster short circuits, yes. so somehow the whisks don't. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The toaster is not plugged into anything, also. No, neither we, we, are the whisks. Yeah, yeah. Um, maybe they're battery-powered whisks? I don't know. Yeah, but even they'd still short-circuit, though, uh, if you put them in the water. Would they? I genuinely don't know. I'm sure that they must do. You'd think they would. Maybe it's... Oh, I don't know. Probably, yeah. Yeah. Um, it is, I, I've written down that it's such a good, fun chase. It's like It's full of ridiculous, idiotic things, but it makes it so fun. It's, that's what that, I think that's the spirit of this film is how fun it is. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yes. Um. Could you fly off the boat and scream like a girl? <laughs> what? Ah! <laughs> <laughs> um, one thing I do want to say is that in the film there are incredible set pieces. Every room, the boat, the house, the toad's lair, everything is made up. Like everything in in the sort of ra- in the the rat city. It's all just so brilliantly put together. Clearly yeah. the animators were like, right, well, we can make this bit out of popsicle sticks and we can use just a, an old watch for the face of Big Ben and we can do this. The one that always, always, always gets me, the drive belt on the engine is the draw band from an old typewriter. Which is, is it? Such, yeah, it's such an old, it's such a bizarre dot to join. I would yeah. only know about it because I bought like a second-hand typewriter that I tried to fix. That, it's such an obscure piece of knowledge. And the, the animators were like, well, we need something that fits this bit. And they, they were clearly looking at different in, like um, bits and bobs and thinking, well, what can fit that bill? What can do this? What can do that? Isn't that just great? Do you know what I mean? It is, it is great. Like, they could have just used a bike chain. or, or But then there were like bike chains and other rooms. Oh, it's just really good. I mean, oh. I, have a, I have a question. You'd, you'd think that, I don't know if there's like a government of this rat world or city. You the think rat that parliament, they'd... yeah. Yeah, oh, sorry, think... that's Downing Street. <laughs> you think that they would um, have control of the floodgates? 
Mm. Rather than just some random toad <laughs> who like <laughs> just... maybe maybe the toad is like the god emperor of this realm. <laughs> maybe maybe, um, because it maybe he's like the the monarchy and there's not a parliament to to sort of Keep stop him, in him check, or sort of thing. quell him. Yeah, maybe. I mean, I do have several things to think about <laughs> the floodgates. Just... <laughs> There's lots of physics inconsistencies in this film, but I can overlook that because it's a cartoon film. But the thing is that, like, um, the floodgates, the little flood house thing that the toad lives in, yeah, that implies not only have humans been there, they will probably come back. Yeah, because it's the, he's not even big enough to let stand on the main bit. Mm. Like, he just stands on the control panel bit, you know. And the master cable must be fucking tiny. Yeah. Why really? <laughs> Why is that? Why is such a what? tiny, tiny cable responsible for this for incredibly the entire... important thing? Yeah, that doesn't make any sense. But, uh, oh well. Um. <laughs> I used to think that the Toad was voiced by Brian Blessed. <laughs> you know yeah, that way? I know, I know what you mean, yeah. I, 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 think, I think he's absolutely loving him, McCallum. He's oh, so, so incredibly good. skilled. Um, I mean, I've told this story a million times, but yeah, we went to see him live. And did just like a show where he was just like, "Hi, I'm Ian McKellen. I've been doing this fucking years, and I'm going to yeah. talk about it." And like, he's just so incredibly skilled. And the um, because he's from the north, he's from like Yorkshire or something. The bit that got me was um, it was like short that door. Liverpool? And it, oh, he might be from Liverpool. I don't know. He's from the north somewhere. Yeah, but like the yeah, south the... to me. Hmm? The south to me. No, nope, it's the north. The world ends at the top of England, Danny. You should know this. But, um... <laughs> fucking bigot. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, Ian McKellen's dead good. Um, quick question about Ian, well not Ian McKellen, about the frog really. On the wall in the royal chamber bit, there uh-huh. was like a painting of George Washington, who was of course a known anti-royalist. So why yeah. has this royal fanatic got a painting of George Washington on his wall? I don't know. Maybe um, liked his outfit. Uh Maybe, maybe. I yeah. don't. I don't know. Um, where, is, where is the toad sourcing all of his liquid nitrogen? If he's that's got a good to, question. To, to freeze all those people, where's he getting it from? Why does his Why does his shrine look like Heathrow Airport's gift shop? <laughs> you know, it just yeah, looks. Yeah. That's that's what I. That's what a fucking airport gift shop looks like in England. Um, it, it really is. <clears throat> Scotland is is just as bad it's just fucking tartan and shortbread tins and and uh, freedom sort of thing <laughs> what i mean it's not oh, even there's not even knickknacks opinion. it's not even knickknacks that say freedom it's just a guy that they hire <laughs> to shout it every now and then he paints um, his face like mel gibson in that film and he goes freedom every half hour <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah why am um, when le frog is a uh, fucking love le frog is is Sort of taking the fingers off of the platform. Why does he count to three? <laughs> when there there's are four five, fingers. There's five fingers, my dude. <laughs> uh, d- dramatic effect. <laughs> I've got no idea. Um, although I have to say, I, I, I like I do love the frog. But my favourite line of his is, um, uh, uh, "We will return the master cable to its rightful home. We leave now." And somebody says, "But what about dinner?" And he comes back and says, "We leave in five hours." <laughs> Yeah, I it's mean, just so, such a ridiculous thing, but I love it. Yeah, so the French are five-hour dinner-eating sociopaths, according to this. Film. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't. I enjoy everyone's pain, but my own. I'm French. <laughs> <laughs> there are the, lots of anti-French jokes in this, aren't there? Actually, the, there are. The best one, though, the, the best one on the boat is we surrender. <laughs> no, not that. The Kung Fu stuff. <laughs> That's the best one. I love that one. That's 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 the only one I'll let them get away with. Um, I mean, say let them get away with. They don't give a fuck. Uh, but yeah, there you go. Um, uh, bit, of, bit of historical tomfoolery there. It is a bit of historical tomfoolery. Um, I have to say, I love a good sight gag. This film is full of them. And I, one of my favourite ones is the bit where it's the mime with like a, a mobile phone strapped to him. <laughs> he's, he's doing the, <laughs> the dancing and the... Oh this God. dance of... Oh. Dance of deceit. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like 
ha- jazz hands up to the side, kicking his legs in the air. Oh god. The mime's probably my favourite. I mm. think. And another another one of my favourites uh, 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 from that exact same sequence is the bit where the mime spins round so that the camera is pointing towards Roddy and um, Kate Winslet. What's her name? Uh, oh. <laughs> it's good good this um, but anyway yeah it's pointing towards the two of them and then I'll the, remember it in a minute and then um, the toad is like oh shit and he has to turn around again. Rita Rita that's it yeah that's it it's just oh I love those ridiculous sort of sight gag things sorry I just completely interrupted you when you were doing that because I just shouted like an idiot Rita <laughs> um, Roddy stands up to a lot of physical punishment in this film yeah he does doesn't he from falling on things and getting his balls crushed a million times to just a million he stands up to a lot of physical punishment. Yeah, and most of the male characters do, I think. You know, mm-hmm. it, the the rats as well. The, the uh, what's his name? Sp- the only one who seems to avoid it really is is a uh, whitey, who is brilliant. <laughs> he is brilliant. Oh, we have mitten. <laughs> You've got your mother's hands. <laughs> you got ladies' hands. <laughs> Fucking Bill Nye, man, honestly. I don't like this ending. I like endings with loads of violence and unhappiness. That's you! That's you! Yeah, it is. And then he gets hurt, and then he's like, Are are you happy now, Spike? (laughs) (laughs) Oh, God. Um... Using um, using the frog like a Spider-Man web is utterly hilarious. <laughs> yeah. The fact that Roddy just picks him up and squeezes him, and he just whip, it's like his dog flips out. That's <laughs> utterly hilarious. Oh god, I do it. Yeah. Um, see if you keep your legs straight. Yes. When you're going down, when you're flying like five hundred feet into the air. <laughs> yeah. If you keep your legs straight, folks, they will snap. They will break. <laughs> Okay, because you're I... going so fast that the water essentially becomes concrete with the the speed that you're going at, and your legs will break. Right, here's my thesis on this, based on thirty seconds of thought that I've given it just now. You know when you see like um, Olympic divers and stuff, and they do all the flips and whatever in the air, and then they like yeah. they put their hands out in front of their face and sort of make like a flat thing with their two palms facing down towards the water yeah i've always thought that was so they can sort of punch a hole in the surface tension of the water and then float into that hole as it were yeah so maybe it's like that when you're keeping your legs straight when you hit the water if you spread out more the surface tension will be greater because it's it's the same force over a greater area but if you are a a tiny tiny sliver that just slips maybe maybe you just literally punch a hole through the surface tension and it wouldn't be as bad I don't know. Maybe. We can try it. Let's try it. Let's try, Let's try it. Right. Let's go to Dover and jump off them big cliffs. <laughs> into three feet of water and then immediately die. Yeah. Oh, you only got the beach. Oh. <laughs> um, I like but... Roddy's character development through this film. He sort of, so he sort do of I. Realises what he wants in life. He goes from having a very hollow life to a very lo- sort of fulfilled life. And... um. Like the bit where he flush, he gets Sid to flush him back down the loo, and he can sort of tread water at the end. And he's like, he, he, that's it's development from the start when he was like frantically paddling like a maniac. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Definitely. And um, it, Chloe pointed this out actually when we were watching it. Um, the bit on the boat where um, I think Rita says good night, and he goes good night, and then he waits a couple of seconds to say it again, and she says it again, and then he says it again, she says it again, and it goes on for a bit. The yeah. reason for that, which I haven't... I've watched this film a hundred million times, but the reason is that when he was on his own in the house at the start, he said, good night, oh. and it just echoed throughout the house. And, oh, that's he, really good. Yeah, exactly. Now that he has someone to say it to, he just wants to say it as much as he can. Do you know what I mean? Oh, I hadn't even thought of that. Oh, my God, that's so smart. Mm. That's really that's really touching, because he's just a lonely little mouse. Is he? A, he's a mouse, isn't he? I think he's a rat. He can, what? He can't be a rat. I think mice have furry tails, rats have scaly tails. I'm not 100% on that, though. Um, yeah, but why would rich folk keep like, a rat in a big cage? Uh, maybe rats are sort of... Um, a mouse and rat. Um, 
Here we go. Rats, mouse, uh, mouse are fucking way smaller. Um, rats have sort of furry tails, dark on top, pale underneath, smooth coat with dark tail. Mice have sort of bright pink tails, as it were. Right, okay. Um, um I mean, does this, is every animal on the planet like, able to speak? Well, are they able to communicate with humans, <laughs> is, is the question I was asking, because he calls that Chinese takeaway by accident, doesn't he? Yeah, he does, that's true, but is that a rat three... Chinese takeaway? Yes, precisely. Is it a Chinese takeaway in, in under London, or is because it one ha- Because in they have London? phones. Yeah. You know, so I don't know, maybe. Who knows? Um, who knows, we'll never know. We'll never, uh, could you dial into a rat Chinese takeaway by mistake if you were a human? That's a good point because they're using the same landlines. So mm. I don't know. Maybe maybe that's why like, orders sometimes don't show up. I don't yeah, know if you've maybe. ever gotten a takeaway, but sometimes the orders just don't show up. So maybe yeah, it's like you called um, a a rat one by accident. That's a good point. Yeah. Though, though we we I mean yeah we we do eat a lot of takeaways to be honest with you. Um, the weird yeah I mean yeah 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 you're right it's yeah <laughs> maybe they're delivering them to rats. Are you all right? Down, down <laughs> grids and delivering them to rats. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> um, the snails are fucking hilarious. Oh, the slugs make this film, don't they? Oh, sorry, the slugs. Fuck's sake, Jesus Christ! <laughs> sorry. Right. I knew I was gonna get it wrong. I knew it. I was like, I'm gonna get corrected on this when I do this. <laughs> I'm gonna say snails, and he's gonna probably say slugs, cause I snails have got shells, don't they? Yes. Fuck's sake. <laughs> You're right, Dan. You have had a bit sh- of a day. We shits. <laughs> they're not funny. I hate them now. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I think they're really good. Um, <laughs> like, both from the, the screaming and that bit where he finds the jammy dodger and it's just like, ooh, and they're doing like sound effects and Beware. singing behind him all that. <laughs> exactly, yeah. <laughs> when they start singing uh, uh, Bobby Vinto's Mr. Lonely. <laughs> yes, yeah. Also, I feel like we shouldn't overlook this fact. Um in in when they when they're initially on the Jammy Dodger and Spike and um what's it? Spike and Whitey catch up to them and the other henchmen as well. They immediately go to crushing his genitals. That's the first that's the first port of call in an in, a, in an interrogation for them. Yeah. I mean it's it, it says a lot about them, I think. <laughs> They've does, got a lot yeah. of, I think they've got a lot of insecurities to work out. Um, <laughs> the Bushwider's <laughs> alive, Spike. <laughs> not the Bushwider. Um, it's not really persuading, is it? You know, because persuading generally doesn't have a threat of your genitals being crushed. No, it doesn't. No. If you can, if you can persuade someone something without in a... threatening that, then that's pretty impressive. Yes. Um, but... Um, in what world are frogs bigger than rats? This one. Well, yeah, right, you are. Yeah, the for some and reason, the rats are about the same size, aren't they? The French ones, but then the toad. I suppose he has a toad. Toads are quite big. The toad is fucking massive compared yeah, to compared to the frog, and uh, I keep saying the frog in the most <laughs> overly French accent I can. Le <laughs> <La> frog. <laughs> That reminds me of, um, I think it's a, I think it's a skit from The Simpsons, like uh, like a really old episode. It's um, Lisa does something embarrassing, and then all the kids start laughing at her, and they're all going ha 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 ha, and um, the French teacher goes no 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 en français, and they all go ha 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 ha. Fuck's sake! It's just so stupid, but I love it. I love that I've, ridiculous I've... accent-based humour. Like from um, was it Family Guy when Stewie had that European uh, speaking spell or whatever it was, and he pulled the cord and the it spins around goes. a cow and it says, "The cow goes, oh, no, it, <laughs> it most, most certainly <laughs> does not." <laughs> the the chicken goes, macaque. No, no, no. Where does the chicken say that? <laughs> the, the rooster goes. <laughs> Kikari gee! <laughs> I'm taking a sip of tea, you fuck. <laughs> it's funny. Um, <coughs> are Australians just better at the English accent than any other group of people on the planet? Um, perhaps, yes. Oh, Hugh Jackman's Australian, isn't he? 
Yeah, <coughs> and so is Andy Circus. Is well, he? I thought Andy Circus was from London. I thought he was from. He might be from New Zealand. I thought he. I thought Andy he was Circus definitely. is from Ryslip, which is a, a stop on the tube. Um, oh, so it is. London borough of Hillingdon. Yeah, he's from London. Oh. Oh, fuck off then. <laughs> um, fuck off, Andy Circus. Or no, just no. My assertion that he was from. Did he grow up anywhere? In... I have absolutely no idea. Maybe you're thinking because in um, Age of Ultron, he spoke with a South African accent, didn't he? Yeah, no, it's more so that I thought I heard him sort of speak with a... Oh, well. Oh, well. Uh, 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 okay. Uh, the thing is, this is like... because This is a, a, a much a different film to what we normally do. Normally yeah. we find something to talk about and we fixate on it for a very long time. But this is a genuinely really good film. So it it's going to be it's, it's tougher to find things to go on about. Do you know what I mean? It certainly is. I mean, we're literally just going on about nonsense. I'm just I'm just reading Andy Serkis's uh, early life now. Uh, <laughs> of course you are. In his teenage years, he is drawn to the karmic possibilities of energy transference. Is he now? Well, is that to do with like, karma and stuff like that? It would certainly sound like it, yeah. The idea that your energy lives on after you. Okay. What? <laughs> well, Danny, no. it's very obvious. Your energy Sorry. lives on after you. Come on. Sorry, I don't want to belittle anyone's beliefs. Um, mm-hmm. Only if they're fucking stupid. No, uh, <laughs> I have one note. Okay. Millicent bystander. <laughs> Millicent bystander. Even oh, at the end you. of the film, they're all sh- <laughs> they're all shouting, Millicent, Millicent. Your classic miscommunication gag has got to be among the funniest gags. It's like, yeah, it's it's. I suppose it's the the spoken equivalent of a sight gag, isn't it? In a strange yeah. way. Yeah, I- I'd really I, like him. I just think there's something really funny about the name Millicent. <laughs> there is a bit. Yeah, it's um, <laughs> yeah, like like the, like in um the office. What it's what is it? Dunder Mifflin Paper Company, and they're, they're in Scranton, and it's it's such it's funny words. <laughs> funny words are funny. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, there's a there's a there's a Scottish sort of skit uh, about a, about an actor that's always trying to get work, and um, and his agency is called Widdicombe and Pump. <laughs> right. <laughs> Although I'm I'm Ronald Villiers, I'm with Widdicombe and Pump. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, and, or in the original office, I think the paper's called Wernham Hog. What? Why do I know that? What? What is that? Wernham Hog. That's the name of the original paper company in the Ricky Gervais version. Yeah, but is that a is that a joke or a reference or something? I feel like I, know I don't that. know. It just sounds uh, stupid. I think it, it does sound very stupid. This is true. Yeah, because you said it. Way. <laughs> um, uh, right. The, the boat is called the Jammy Dodger. It, it's not doesn't seem to be thematically linked to the biscuit, though. No, <laughs> it could be. I don't know. Maybe there's, I mean, there's, maybe there's some a pot of jam in the the core of the ship or something. It's a very English film, so you're gonna have mm. Jammy Dodger mm. in there somewhere. You know? I love Jammy Dodgers, man. I, I do biscuit. like Jammy Dodgers, to be fair. Yeah, in fact, not you know what? Best, I'm gonna though. go on. No, fuck you. I'm gonna go on record now and what? say they are the best biscuit. No, they're not. What? What is the best biscuit then? Tunnocks. Tea cakes. Oh, come! They're barely a biscuit. They're more. Are of a, you a, fucking like joking, Lewis? I will hunt you down and piss on your corpse. Biscuit okay? is a part of a tonic's tea cake. The whole thing is not a biscuit. It is a biscuit. You have it with your tea. Yeah, but you can't dunk a tonic's tea cake. Yes, you can. At great expense to yourself, <laughs> but you can. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know my my gran used to take the edges off of digestives so you could dunk them. What? The edges off a duck? Because they don't fit in the mug. Oh. <laughs> An easier solution seems to be to use bigger mugs. What? Or, or just snap it in half. That's Listen, she didn't have a lot of money. She could be going out spending fucking hundreds of pounds on big mugs. Hundreds I of mean, pounds on she big just, mugs? She just wanted I a cup of tea. She, did, she, like a fiver from she just wanted a, she wanted a cup of tea. She didn't want to have a bath. <laughs> God's sake, you know what I mean? Well, oh, uh, oh the, the the digestive doesn't fit. Well, time to go and buy new mugs. No, it's not just, to no, buy just new take mugs. the edge off and just dunk it in. Or, or just snap it in too. Taking the edge off. I, I, I can imagine now your nan is like, 
hunched over a chopping board or something with a little ruler. No! It's been like, okay, the, 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 the opening is five centimetres, the biscuit needs to be four and a half at most. No, she just takes the, the edge off and then you've got the, the the majority of the biscuit, but it now fits. I see. But then you're, you're then the, the bit of the biscuit that you've broken off, then you, you have to... That can't get dunked because it's too small. Yeah, it can. Or does she dunk it? Yeah. Hmm, Okay. I still think it's probably easier to just snap the biscuit in half. But why? Because you want to dunk the whole thing. Yeah, but you can't. So why not dunk the majority of it and leave a little bit at the side rather than dunking even less with two bits? Um. Yeah, I suppose that's a that's a good point. Owned. <laughs> well, there, there we go, everyone. There we go. Um, but yeah, so we've established that Jamie Dodge is the best biscuit. Um, no, we haven't. Um, <laughs> what do you think is the worst biscuit? Oh, probably rich tea. Yeah, they aren't great, are they? They're too, They're pretty too, bland. too sort of crispy in a weird way. Do you know what I yeah. mean? Like, like, like a digestive or a hobnob, it's sort of crumbly, but a, a rich tea is crispy. Our apologies to our non-English listeners. This is, is in incomprehensible garbage to you. But yeah. um, we're talking about assorted types of sweet snack that you might dunk in a tea I suppose that would be a cookie I don't know do you, do you know um, let me think what else I was gonna for the worst biscuit I was gonna say Garibaldi yeah they're shit yeah because I remember every single time you have um, like a every now and then some confectioners company will, will have like a poll and they'll say what's Britain's favourite biscuit well like OK Magazine will be like well Katie Price hasn't done anything in a week we'd better drum up a, a story out of nothing <laughs> so they'll put on their Twitter and say oh what's well, Britain's best biscuit or whatever always about 20% of Britain or something ridiculously high says Garibaldi have these people ever had a Garibaldi I have Christ they, yes so have I they're awful they're so why would bad. anybody choose to eat them they're fucking horrendous they're not they're not nice at all it's just it's the, the, the thinnest possible biscuit you can imagine this, I don't think it's even sweetened because the raisins are supposed to do the sweetening but yeah. they don't because they're raisins and not sugar who wants, so, to dunk, who wants to dunk a raisin into a cup of tea? Precisely. Jesus Christ. It's almost as bad as fruit and nut chocolate. Yeah! Which is something that my grandma always used to love. Which I just don't understand. It's I don't understand whole nut chocolate. Yes. Because usually it's like hazelnuts. And hazelnut and chocolate, that goes quite well together. I can get that. But it's fruit crunchy. and nut chocolate? Who is eating a bar of chocolate and thinking, God, you know what, I'll go well with this? Some sultanas. Yeah, what? I know. It's so strange. And oh, they're everywhere you look, like because obviously because I work in a, a petrol station, like confectionery is sort of my life now, um, and I see fruit and chocolate combinations all over the shop. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, what are you doing? And someone buys it, and I'm like, you you sure? You like? <laughs> Don't like, get me wrong. I think there are certain fruit and chocolate combinations that work, but I'm I'm yet to see a combination of fruit and chocolate. Where it's like the raw fruit is paired with chocolate, and that worked. Yeah, For example, I'm not chocolate gonna... orange, brilliant maybe... combination. A Terry's chocolate orange, a work of genius. I mean, I don't like Terry's chocolate oranges. Well, do you like chocolate orange flavored things in general? Not really. Oh well, there we go. But like, my point is that like, what, what I imagine would be even worse, in your opinion, than a Terry's chocolate orange would be just like a slice of a mandarin orange with a, a little cube of dairy milk on top. I imagine <laughs> yeah. that would be horrendous. That would be disgusting. Um, yes, exactly. It would be disgusting. It That's really the correct would. response to fruit and chocolate <laughs> mixing. Oh, Lord. The thing Soci- is, it's like a weird society, of... society must divide. Uh, <laughs> it's like a weird holdover of like, well, in order to make our food nice. Like old British. It's like, well, in order to make our food nice, we must fill it with, with, with raisins and sultanas and, 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 and uh, nuts. So, yeah, but... We have nicer things now. I would rather not do that. I'd rather just put something nice in my food rather than do that. Why are you using a commode? Don't you just sling your shit out of a window like in the good old days? <laughs> oh, God. It's, um... Remember the know. good old days? <laughs> the good um, the... <laughs> Remember the Everyone has polio. <laughs> The thing is, I understand that people have different tastes. And yeah, if you like a Gary Boldy, that's that's on you, fine. But are you honestly telling me you think that's your favourite biscuit? Another thing that looks shit is like, Spotted Dick. A spotted Dick? I did. Um, I had to write an article on Spotted Dick a while ago, actually, yeah. Have you ever had it? I've never had it, no. 
Isn't there a so Scottish what, equivalent or something? I remember reading that somewhere. There's some horrible Scottish food as well. Like hag, haggis just out the gate. <laughs> that is that is in the people also search for thing. It's, yeah, it's sheep stomach. You know, mm. it's um, it's not really nice at all. Mm. But somehow I like black pudding, which is like pig's blood and. Yeah, pig's blood and breadcrumbs or something, isn't it? Yeah, so it, uh, it's strange. Mm. It's um, utterly bizarrely. The, I, I was doing research on, on Spotted Dick or something, and I sort of discovered through this research that essentially every country in Europe has something that's adjacent to a Spotted Dick. If you don't know what a Spotted Dick is, it's it's sort of, um here we go, uh, traditionally made with suet and dried fruit, and often served with custard. It's um basically you mix all your ingredients together, put them in a bag, and boil it for ages, and then eventually you get a cake with fruit in it. That's, that's the idea of what Spotted Dick is. But yeah. like every single country in Europe has a variation on this idea. <laughs> the, I've discovered there's a Scottish one, which has some very Scottish name that I've completely forgotten, but it's essentially identical to Spotted Dick. Right. And then there's like, um, the German Stollen cake is essentially just Spotted Dick, but it's baked instead of boiled. Uh-huh. Like, so many different countries have things similar to this. But why? <laughs> have we not got past it? Have you, not, have you ever tried a brownie? I mean, Christ, brownies are delicious. They are. Why are you still eating Spotted Dick? I have, I have a potential hot take, Lewis, right? Uh-huh. See these quote-unquote delicacies that you hear about, like haggis and, and frogs' legs and snails and all that? Yeah. My hot take is this. Cooking was just shit 300 <laughs> years ago, and for some reason they're some, somehow heralded as the traditional uh, delicacies of, of, oh. of countries when it's just... Yeah, you didn't have anything else to eat, so you just fucking cooked some frog one time, and you just went, mmm, let's make this a delicacy, <laughs> a delicacy, mmm, sheep's stomach and blood, mmm, mmm, <laughs> give a bit of that. It's like, no, come on. The thing is, it's a it's bizarrely like, European thing. Like, um... Yeah, America, the America thing... just fucking, they, they're like, no, 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 burger, fucking chips, whatever you want. It's like, there's, I can't think of an American delicacy. Because they've got so many um, alterations. Yeah, I think the thing that gets me though is I think it's just that in the UK in prehistoric times or whatever, no herbs really grew wildly. Mint no. and lavender maybe, and that was sort of what you were getting. But then you expand into sort of Central Europe a bit, and you're like, oh, basil, oregano, all these spices that actually taste good. Wow. The only there's, the, there's got all this French cuisine with like uh, caramelized onions and thyme, and you're like, wow, these French people have been doing great things with food for fucking centuries. I mean, I think Italy's probably got the best sort of delicacies. As, oh as, god, yeah, definitely. I mean, pasta, pizza. Oh, fuck, I just, love pasta, man. I fucking, I love Italian food, honestly. Yeah, I mean, right. The thing about Italian food as well that gets me is like nobody has changed the recipe for carbonara in centuries because no. it's really fucking good. Yeah, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Well, it's yeah. last time you had a carbonara and thought, no, there's something wrong with that. No, you have. You've never thought that because it's great. <laughs> I haven't. You're right. And then, I'll... and then, like, um, you taste, um, I don't know. Yeah, you go round to your nan's for a Sunday lunch, and she's done like a some beef and some potatoes and some vegetables, and you're like, okay, well, a third of this is edible. Yeah, um, you compare that with a, you compare that with a, an Italian dish, and you're just like, sorry. I'm going to have the Italian dish. Precisely, yeah. This is why I, on Christmas, every year in our house, I always cook Italian food because it is just nice there. It, um, I, I will make, um, I think uh, you, you've had the, the thing I make for Christmas. Uh, we didn't we didn't spend Christmas together. But no. um, when you came I down ha- to our house, I was like, oh, do you want macaroni cheese? And Danny was like, yeah, all right. And it was so delicious. Made, yeah, yeah, precisely, the Christmas macaroni cheese. And then you have all the amazing bread they make in Italy. Like focaccia and panettone and yeah, it's all so good. Why? Why isn't everybody eating that? <laughs> oh. Plus, fuck all the fucking European cheeses. Jesus Christ, mozzarella, parmesan, parmigiano reggiano, uh, all those French cheeses, brie, camembert. Blue. It's all so blue. They're blue. It's all so good. <laughs> it's also blue. Yeah. It was also blue. I think. Um, yeah, I mean, blue cheese is, is certainly an acquired taste. I think it's something like, I like blue cheese as an ingredient. I struggle to eat it on its own. Yeah. I think that's my sort of, my, my hot take on blue cheese. <laughs> Do you think that's why like, Rome like, just rose up? Because it's like, why is no one eating our food? <laughs> Um, I don't know. I don't know how. I don't know how significant like, Italian cooking was back then. In, uh, it in wasn't. the way that, <laughs> right? Yeah I, yeah, I thought that. Um, as far as I am aware, 
and I, th- I am prepared for somebody to correct me because I'm not an expert. I've done, I've, like, I've done bits and bobs of research on Italian cuisine and stuff, and I think it was surprisingly late that Italians got pasta. Really? Like the, the, yeah, the the sort of story that people tell is that Marco Polo, the, uh, uh, an Italian explorer, went to China and was like, God, these noodles are good, and then took them back to Italy. But that's actually not true. Um, turns out that mixing eggs and flour was, was not a difficult logical leap to make. And lots of people <laughs> no. did that and thought, well, this is all right, this. And then they started trying to make it into different shapes, and pasta was born. Yeah. Well, there you go. Mm. The origin story. There'll be a fucking Avengers yeah. film out about that. There will, yeah. Marco Polo sailing across the seas. I'm going to discover pasta. No, you won't. We've already had it. We've, we've got it, mate. We come back. <laughs> Maybe it'd just be a really heartbreaking story. Like, he's coming back from, um, from, so, from China, noodles in hand. And he just looks up to the port. And there's, like, an old, uh, like, a Italian grandmother rolling out some pasta dough and slicing it up ready for Sunday lunch. And he's yeah. like, oh, no. And he just le- launches himself off the boat and drowns. <laughs> oh shit! Uh, yeah, he just he just arrives. Like, My friends, I have a ama- sorry, I have an amazing invention for you. And they're like, "What the fuck are you talking about? Look, look at these noodles. If we maneuver them in a different way, they become something else. Yeah, we, we just we just put egg and flour together. It's it's fine. <laughs> it's it's not a complex idea, Marco Polo. <laughs> I love how I don't hesitate with the French accent, but like when I go for an Italian, it's like, oh, sorry, sorry. No, I know it's, it's something weird. Maybe it's the, the fact that, like, in Britain, it's... Because we're sufficiently close to France, it's almost like, oh, yeah, you can make fun of French people, that's all right. Even though yes. it's not. But, and yet people are like, oh, yeah, that's fine. It's the same with, like, like, like Scotland. It's like everyone sees fit to take the piss out of Scotland all the time. And I'm getting a bit... <sighs> Calm down, Danny. Calm down. <laughs> but I think it is just... I think it's because there's just like a rivalry for whatever reason. What, between the UK and France? Yeah. I mean, historically, yeah. we've always been at war with each other. And there's all those Blackadder jokes about about France. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's true. There's always a French joke in fucking whatever season it is, a Blackadder. It doesn't matter what it is. It doesn't matter if Blackadder is set in Imperial China. <laughs> it, there's going to be a fucking French joke in there somewhere. Um, but yeah, there you go. Indeed. I mean, obviously we could talk about food for fucking ages, but like, yeah, why would you Why would you subject yourself to boiled vegetables? <laughs> like, Jesus Christ, can you not do something more inventive than boil some peas? Jesus Christ. I mean, if you're going to, if you're going to go on a diet, then boiling <laughs> vegetables or steaming them even is good. It is, yeah, but it will crush your soul. Oh yeah, That's I mean, problem. mine's is mine's is crushed a long time ago. Um, <laughs> when I tried that one out, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think I'm I'm vastly running out of notes. Yes, I mean, I've I've made my way through all of my notes on Italian food, so yeah, I think I'm out. Yeah, uh, let's see. Any any other ones? Any other ones? No, nope, I think I'm I'm done. No, I think I'm done as well. Uh, do you have a closing statement? I, I do have a closing statement. I like this film very much. I like Aardman films in general. It's it's kids' animation, but a lot of effort's gone into it. Do you know what I mean? It's like yeah. um, you can tell somebody took time and care over the script, and people took time and care over the set pieces. And It's just like, this is the kind of thing I like to see in cinema, is where people are taking something that pre-exists and thinking, all right, let's do this again, but let's just try harder. Let's make this better. We can yep. do that. Let's just make this better. That's what I really like to see in cinema. And that's what I really like about this film. I agree. Um, a funny film with a star-studded cast and a great animation team behind it. I'm with Spike normally on his philosophy on how films should end. But this time, I'm not. <gasps> Danny liked a happy ending to a film. Yeah, yeah, ah, yeah. Everybody, it's sound the sound alarms. Well, I mean, all the rats have really done is create global warming for themselves. Have they? Yeah. The ice caps How's will it? melt one day and everything will be flooded. Um, I suppose unless they chip off the ice and push it the other way up the tunnel. Push it's it like all, it's just Push it the other way up the... What the fuck? It's fucking a million people at the, at, at, in their toilets. Yeah. 
Do you see the size of that tsunami? I like the I like the guy who's like raging that he couldn't surf on <laughs> the death of everyone. He's like, fuck's sake. <laughs> I wanted to surf while everyone around me died. For a, soci- a sociopathic surfer and just rage. <laughs> it was like I've been planning this. Oh, he was in he was in cahoots with the toad. The toad was yeah, like, was. if you give me the master cable, you can surf on their corpses. <laughs> yes, great, it was. Great impression. Um, it was actually pretty good, yeah. Um, have, we got, <laughs> have we got a bit of shilling to do, be it pasta related or not? Yeah, we do. We do. Um, I am on Instagram at O'Hiram. I'm on Facebook at Daniel K. Actor. I'm on Twitter at Kerzo2000. What are you on, Lewis? I'm on Instagram at Lewis underscore Brindley. I am on Twitter at Lewis Brindley 4. And I have a Facebook page called Lewis Brindley. And the show also has a Facebook page called Shouting Into The Void. Um, it's a really good Facebook page. I quite like it. If you're a member of the Facebook group page, I'm I'm very Facebook illiterate because every six months I delete it and think, oh, this is just... I don't like sitting on Facebook. Ah. But I, ah. I would like you to post on our Facebook page, please. Is that something people can do, Danny? Yeah, they can. Oh, fantastic. Do that. I then. think. I think. <laughs> if, yeah. if you are able to do that do that if you are not able to do that let us know and we'll try and solve that problem because we, we, we want to have more interactivity and be like oh hi how's how's life and do do some finger guns and stuff <laughs> yeah uh, <laughs> we, <laughs> we are we're on uh, Podomatic we're on Spotify we're on Apple Podcasts we have a YouTube channel we're on Deezer we're on Google Podcasts we're on Amazon Podcasts we have a PayPal donate button, so anything you can spare, anything at all, it would be very much appreciated. Um, we're also on Patreon, and we want to take this opportunity to thank our wonderful patrons, uh, Chloe. Thank you. Darius. Thank you. Sophie. Thank you. Peter. Thank you. Aditya. Thank you. And of course, Richard. Thank you. Thank you. One yes. and all. Thank you, one and all. You you help us enormously, and um, if you would like to be a part of their their number, you can check us out at patreon.com slash shouting into the void. We've got a cool little Discord where we chat about stuff and things, mostly films and TV, because that's what the podcast's about. But, you know, if you want to talk about pasta, anybody in the Patreon, chuck it in the Discord. Yeah, please yeah. do. Um, yeah. We also have merch. Uh, we sell uh, T-shirts, tote bags, jumpers, stickers, uh mugs all sorts of things uh and they are on teespring and red bubble so go and have a look see what tickles your fancy uh, and if nothing does buy something anyway <laughs> yes that is precisely the message i wanted to get across yeah um yes thank is, is that the last bit of shilling no there's, oh, there's, no, there's a, another bit there's another for god's sake um we are partnered with a fantastic company called number 12 crochet avenue and lewis has some amazing things to say about uh, them and they're all true indeed i do uh, number 12 crochet avenue is an amazing crochet company run by my amazing wife where she crochets amazing things and she does that amazingly um we're in the run-up to christmas now she is actually currently making a little christmas project that's really cute and i really like it um which is going to be going out to someone in time for christmas so um Go and check out the Instagram. It's at number 12 Crochet Avenue. It's all letters and words. No, 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 no bloody numbers or punctuation marks. No way. Uh, ah. It is all just words. So go and check it out. Thank you very much. Yes, please do. Um, well, that is, uh, that's us, I believe. Um, I believe it is. What are we doing? What are we doing next week, Lewis? Well, it's a, it's a toss up. Because yep. we're doing, we're doing an Ardman trilogy. It's either, uh, Chicken Run or. Uh-huh. It's Wallace and Gromit, Curse of the Were Rabbit. What would you? What are you feeling, Nan? Let's save Chicken Run for the last one, mm. and we'll do Wallace and Gromit because I really like Chicken Run. Mm. I really like Chicken Run too. It's a good film. Yeah, it certainly is. We'll so do Wallace we'll and do, Gromit next week then. We'll do Wallace and Gromit. Yeah, brilliant. And then Chicken Run afterwards. Yes. It, there yeah. we go, everybody. Amazing. <laughs> Seamless, 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 uh, beautiful, perfect. Decided, it. oh god, decided it live on air. Perfect. <laughs> yeah, no, no for no forethought. Literally, there wasn't. It was literally. We're not very organised on this podcast. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Uh, so yeah, please uh, join us next week for Wallace and Gromit, and we will hear you 
see you, smell you, try and drown your entire species. Yep. Next time. We'll put you in a deep freeze next time. Yeah. Thank you for listening. Goodbye.